Do you believe that extraterrestrial intelligence has visited planet Earth? I think you can go a step further. It hasn't just visited. It's been here a long time, and it's still here. Uh, and it has uh, uh, basically, um, you know, people talk about the wow signal, uh, looking for extraterrestrial intelligence. The wow signal is that people see it on an almost regular basis. That's the communication that's already here. And, and that statement seems so incredible that it, it's tough to believe. Right? Like, people hear that, and maybe a lot of people here hear that, and they don't believe it. And so I'm curious. If you had to assign a probability to that statement, that you believe extraterrestrial intelligence has visited, visited this planet, what probability would you assign? A hundred percent. And that's not just my opinion. I mean, look, um, the National Defense Appropriation Act, passed last year, signed by, by Biden in uh, December. 30 pages of that is the establishment of an unidentified aerial phenomenon office the establishment of looking into the harm that's happened to any of a number of the individuals, going back to 1945 and looking at the disinformation and misinformation that has been uh, basically articulated over the decades. Twelve U.S. senators have signed on to a document that basically says we want the information. The establishment of an office, Arrow, in the Department of Defense, has 25 people working in it right now. And what's their, what's their goal? Collecting the information across all of the, uh, all of the U.S. Department of, of Intelligence, sorry, Department of Defense, Intelligence Offices, and collation of that into a uniform format for the very first time and provision of that then to Congress, the creation of a whistleblowers program specifically that allows people from, the, from within, who I'm going to say this, who've been working on the reverse engineering programs, reverse engineering of objects, so that they can come in and break their oaths, but specifically just to talk to Congress and give that information in classified settings. And that the most recent one that happened was just last weekend, and it created quite a hornet's nest in Washington. And, and so let's just create kind of like a logical framework here. So we start at the top. We say now there is 100% probability that extraterrestrial intelligence has visited Earth. Now we have to go down to why that statement may be true, why you believe that statement is true. What, what is the evidence? And I think perhaps we all may have to read between the lines a little bit here. You may not maybe divulge everything, but in your opinion, what do you believe to be the most compelling evidence to support that statement? Well, I think the most compelling evidence is you just need to look at what your government is doing right now about it. I mean, just go and look at the number of uh, politicians. And this is interesting, on both sides of the aisle, who have come together and signed off on this statement. I mean, I was involved last year with putting together some of the wording of that, uh, of that, uh, the NDAA, which was passed into law. So, I mean, so what are they basing their opinions on? They're basing their opinions on the dozens of individuals who in one manner or another have come forward and talked to them in classified settings. So that's the first thing. Then my personal experiences with the individuals who are, who, well, the one person who actually was involved with collecting a lot of that original information, uh, and then my experience with people who, frankly, I know have worked or are working on the reverse engineering programs. Re okay, so let's, let's take one step back. Reverse engineering programs. Of downed craft. Now, the first question that people will ask is, well, if they're so frigging advanced, why are they, why are they crashing? Because what's crashing is not actual living things. I mean, if you, I, mean, I use this example a lot. If you wanted to study a tribe of cannibals in the middle of the Amazon, are you gonna go yourself and show up in the middle of the, of the tribe and not hopefully become dinner on the other side of it? So if you're an advanced intelligence, you know, I don't think we're all that advanced, frankly. Um, you're not gonna basically put your, your uh, life and limb at risk by coming here. So mostly what you're seeing here are either drones or some sort of advanced AI or whatever it is. I mean, look, we're, we're, already, we're already dealing with a, a, an alien intelligence in our own emails, right? Our own uh, you know, chat GPT, et cetera. We don't even know what it's doing. So imagine if you were a million years ahead of us. Uh, how, do you, how do you have a dialogue with something like that? Or what is it that that could possibly do? Yeah. And I'm glad, I'm glad that we've got some people here to witness these statements. I think they're very consequential. And so we start with now 100% probability of extraterrestrial intelligence. We go to evidence. 
We now talk about downcraft. We see the, mil the government moving in a certain direction. Presumably, the downcraft is made of some material. Presumably, we could test that material. I know you've done a little bit of work firsthand. You yeah. have seen some material. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Right. Well, um, you know, so what is it that you hope to discover out of a material? So let's just go back, I mean, just briefly. Uh, and, and why would you want to do it in the first place? So basically, a grain of silicon, you know, back in the 50s or 60s changed our entire culture and world, right? I mean, so something as small as that, the discovery of what you could accomplish with a little piece of germanium uh, doped with the right uh, elements, changed our understanding. Now, so we have multiple simultaneous sensor systems that have seen these objects go from 50 feet above the water to up to 14 miles and then back in less than a second. Right? I mean, that's just a truth. The U.S. government has confirmed that these kinds of measurements are done. Now, they're very careful what they say. They say, well, we have no evidence of E.T. Well, because, you know, no E.T. is going to come walking in here and say hello, right? But um, if you read between the lines and the flip side of it, it does stuff that we can't do. We know that the Russians and the Chinese are not doing and so if you can go from zero to 5,000 miles an hour and take a, a right turn and not end up squished like a bug on the windscreen on the other side, if they have windscreens, uh, then uh, what is the physics that accomplishes that? So what that tells you is that we need to rethink our physics, first of all, to say that, well, you know, we saw birds fly, so it took us 3,000 years and we figured out how to fly. But now we see these things doing this, so what is it that that lets us do? So I know some of the physicists on the inside who work at some of these big defense corporations who basically said, oh, well, here's how you tweak even general relativity to accomplish that. But then you say, well, how much energy is needed to do it? Well, more than the whole nuclear output of the planet per day, per movement. So you start to backtrack and you say, okay, well, who could do that? Well, we can't. Will we be able to do it in a thousand years? But if we had a piece of any of this, let's say it's a thousand uh, uh, revolutions ahead of us, or a million revolutions ahead of us, even a tiny piece of knowledge from that could revolutionize what it is that we're doing. I'm always, I'm, a, I'm always looking for the opportunity to look at the, at the upside of this. I'm not worried about them coming and you know, raiding us or yeah. taking our women and children. Uh, that's not my concern. My concern is how do we use it? Yeah, yeah, and, and, and I'm curious, do you have confidence that you, us collectively, will have material literal physical material to evaluate, to analyze. Yes, 100%. 100% again. It's okay. there. It's okay. there. It's, I mean, I can say this. I was working with a group about seven, eight years ago, and I literally got within a few weeks of gaining access to one of the, um, one of the objects. And when the people who didn't want us to gain access to it found out about it, they pulled some bureaucratic administrative tricks and snatched it away. That's wild. And, and so, so now we have you, Dr. Nolan, making this bold statement, you are well positioned to make this statement. Now maybe we get into like some fun. Let's like feel comfortable hypothesizing a little bit as to what is happening. Like what, what is it, right? Like and nobody's gonna hold you to this, right? Now maybe we go down from 100% probability to now we're speculating, right. okay? Now let's speculate together. What, what do you think it is, right? So to, to do that, I'll start with kind of a mantra I've had for the last while. So, you know, individual experiences of what people see is an anecdote, but an anecdote doesn't convince a scientist. What's it convinces a, what is it that convinces a scientist? Data, right? What doesn't convince scientists? A conclusion. So really the objective here and what has allowed me to actually talk to some of my scientist colleagues who first said, Gary, you're gonna ruin your career. Well, okay, whatever, it's too late for that. Um, but I haven't, uh, and um, because I basically say, look, if you and I can agree that the data is real, irrespective of what the potential conclusions might be, the hypotheses, yeah. then the onus is no longer on me to come up with an answer. Now it's also on you, because we're having a discussion about this. So it's believe the data, not the conclusion. Yeah. So you see the data, and that's, when, and that's where the fun is, and that's yeah. where the hypothesis starts. So 
you know, people have come up with all kinds of ideas. Everything from future humans, future AI coming back to us, because somehow they figured out time travel, to what's called the ultra-terrestrial hypothesis that they are part of. I'm sure some people here at least know what a von Neumann probe is, right? This idea of a self-replicating machine that could have been developed by a technology or a civilization on the other side of the galaxy that even in just a few hundred million years would, could make its way by conventional means all the way across the, uh, all the way across the galaxy. And when it gets there, it basically builds copies of itself and it does what it's doing and it basically, some other civilization sent it out. Now, Avi Loeb was here last year. So I'm part of a, an SAB with Avi Loeb uh, on a company called Copernicus Space Corporation. And guess what? Our objective is to build the first von Neumann probes to go out and spread humanity's original presence across yeah. the reality. So that's one of the others. Yeah. A third one is... Well, what do you, Gary, Dr. Nolan, you have to speculate. What do you right. think it is? Let's be bold. I think it is an advanced form of intelligence, something that we don't understand, that is using some kind of intermediaries. However, it is, like I said, about the, you know, the you don't you're not going to end up in the middle of the tribe. The angry monkeys that are flinging muck at each other or nuclear bombs. Uh, you're not going to and you're not going to show yourself in the middle of the ambulance. You're going to send intermediaries. You know, it's not that they walk amongst us that, you know, you, uh, you know, wearing a skin suit are actually the alien, right? No, you're going to basically put something there that is, I think of it as an intelligence test. Can you see what's in front of you for what it really is? Yeah. Can you see the anomalous data point that is there that you realize what it is? I mean, when the uh, S South American um, native tribes first saw the um, Spanish ships coming across the horizon, they didn't realize what it was. They couldn't see it for what it was. So, you know, this is, as I said before, this is the kind of the wow factor. Yeah. They're, they're showing up, they're saying, well, who amongst you are intelligent enough to realize what it is that you're looking at? Yeah. They don't have to land on the White House lawn. We can only make the joke about is there intelligence in DC at all, right? You, you just need to show yourself to enough to acculturate. Yeah. Now, if you've been around for a long time, and this is what, something that I do think has been, they've been around for a long time, they are affecting our culture, right? It's actually often thought that many of the religions that we think of as the most important have been part of this process. Hmm. I mean, uh, there are so many tangents to go down. We have about right. a, one minute and 45 seconds. Wow. We've covered a lot, though. Mm -hmm. You know, I think what you just said feels like it has strong parallels to religion, mm -hmm. to what's happening with mm -hmm. AI right now, to the simulation hypothesis. Like, they all are kind of saying something very, very similar here. Right. And I guess I'm curious, right, as we wrap this up, what happens next? Well, what happens next is, I mean, what you're actually seeing is what's happening next is the professionalization of this. Right, it's not just me. I mean, I have many now scientists with whom I'm working. Right, there's Ryan Graves, who was one of the pilots that saw the, some, of the, some of the objects in those videos. He's got the um, American uh, Institute of Aeronautics and um, Engineers, 50,000 strong organization. He's got a group within them, as well as a 501c3 for civil aviation. Yeah. Um, you know, we've used, and I'm just going to be honest, we've used the threat narrative that these things are showing up repeatedly. I mean, this is today. They're showing up repeatedly around our, yeah. our ships. So I think we've... the. The objective has been to make it okay to talk about it. Yeah. Because, because we made it okay to talk about it, we opened the apertures on the filters on the sensor systems. That's what partly led to the seeing of those Chinese balloons. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't have seen them if it weren't for that. Yeah. Right. Because we created laws that said it's time to open the apertures because they were only looking at particular uh, flight paths of things that look like a missile or a or yeah. a plane. So uh, that's the next part. I'm frankly involved with the development of a, a 501c3 myself. Uh, we're calling it the Seoul Foundation. And our objective is to actually write policy papers for government, governments uh, and commercial enterprises to basically give them the opportunity to, to think about it. It's not that it's, it's going to happen tomorrow. It's a slow release process, we think. Uh, but to basically give that opportunity. And then to develop what I'm doing, actually, is developing novel kinds of uh, materials analysis pipelines for uh, basically an analyzing the material which is in the public sphere or the semi-public sphere, but then also, frankly, as a goad uh, and a lure to bring in those who do have the stuff behind yeah. the scenes so that they can say, oh, okay, because I want to see it published. Yeah. 
I don't want to see it behind the scenes anymore. Yeah. And finally, what you're seeing is that a lot of people who are within the Intel communities as well are frustrated and they want to bring it out because they haven't been able to figure it out because the best minds aren't working on it. Yeah. The crazy scientists at Harvard, MIT, Yale, or wherever yeah. um, are basically not allowed in because maybe they do a little bit too much of this or other things, um, and they couldn't get a security clearance if they wanted to. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I agree. I think that we need to destigmatize this narrative. We need to mm -hmm. share this narrative more broadly. The time gods gave us two minutes, Dr. Nolan. Looks mm -hmm. like we were doing pretty well. People okay. seem to like it. We're very lucky there. Um, I'm curious. How can we accelerate this, right? Like, we want to get the brightest minds on this. I think maybe you and I share this. Like, let's go. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. I think you need to bring together, I mean, this is the part of this professionalization. Yeah. You need to bring together the right set of, uh, basically, frankly, anthropologists and sociologists. How do we talk about the fact that we're not at the top of the intellectual food chain, first of all? How do you deal with the, with the religions? Every one of these religions is going to basically look to whatever that is and say, okay, well, what do they believe, right? We know that the Vatican is involved. I mean, and I'm working with people who are working with the Vatican to basically get them. They've already said, this is very arrogant, they've already said, well, of course they can be Christians. Of course they can have a Jesus. They can be saved. Uh, they have a soul. Um, I mean, I, I think the opportunity is for the, us to worry about whether they think we're yeah. worthy of saving. Well, Dr. Nolan, I, I really appreciate you taking the time to have this conversation. I appreciate all of you coming on this journey with us. I hope you learned something new. I hope you're willing to question your beliefs just a little bit more. And maybe together we can understand reality. Yeah. There's Thank something you. here. There is. Thank you, guys. Thank you.